Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but one of the things, one of the reasons I started this was obviously to help you take some information from experts in the field of mental health or wherever else and and share it with you. Give them a platform to be heard. It's just, it's a win-win all around. But the part I don't like talking about because I feel a little guilty about it, but I think it's important for me to be honest, is that I use these for me. Uh, A perspective change is so important to me to see the world a little different and to use this podcast not just as a a podcast to build something, but as a tool to help my own mental health. And one thing I've been noticing, and we're going to talk about this right in the beginning of this conversation, is that I miss my friends. (laughs) And as we get older, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it gets kind of weird and hard to stay in contact with them. So I reached out to uh, two of my friends, Sam Soholt and Nolan Berg, and asked, hey, if you guys want to do a podcast, we can just shoot the shit for a while and uh, see what happens. And um, it felt good to talk to him again. But at the same time, I was also noticing that having a camera and talking into Zoom doesn't have that flow that I've been experiencing or that I wanted, right? That communication face to face with your buddies where nobody's around where you can say anything you want unfiltered and there was a little bit of that so and I noticed that after after the podcast and watching it again which is an interesting perspective to have but I would say 90% of it was like god I'm just so happy I get to talk to these guys again and we hope to do more of these as we as we get going and you'll notice like right at the end uh when they I, I don't know if they thought I turned the camera off but it didn't feel like we were in an interview anymore. <laughs> it felt like we were just talking. So I hope we can get to that point eventually. I'm just, maybe I'm being hypercritical of this, but I think I know what I want to get to. I just want to talk to my friends. So this is just a conversation with me and two of my friends. <laughs> Confucius said we have two lives, and the second begins when we realize that we only have one. We're all given one whole life. And when we find and break the barriers that are preventing us from living fully, we have an audacious attempt to improve mental health. One Whole Life with Sean Francis. I thought, I thought I'd start by kind of explaining why I want to do this in podcast form, which is with this One Whole Life thing, I've been using it not just to learn about mental health and push it to people and talk to experts and take their wisdom and tools and give it away, but also to help my own. And in the last year, I've noticed that a lot of things I do, I choose work over like the things that fill my bucket. And I miss talking to you guys and I miss hanging out with you. And I don't know how to do that as we're getting older. So it kind of took a year to go, oh, I have this silly little podcast. Why don't I just invite them on and we'll just bullshit (laughs) maybe once a month or one time if it goes well, (laughs) if it doesn't go well, (laughs) we'll go. Uh, it always yeah. goes well. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, can, can I ask the first question? Because yeah. I feel like I can, I'm in a safe space with you guys. Okay. Yes. And I need you guys yep. to close your eyes real Please. quick. Okay. No one close your eyes. Come on, man. All right. I did. Now imagine an Eagle with an erection. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, okay. I got it. Okay, Sam, you guys can open your eyes. <laughs> Sam, what, what did your eagle with an erection look like? <laughs> uh, mine was a like a golden eagle flying with a red rocket, like a dog has. <laughs> you gave him a he oh, had a dog wow. a dog penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, Nolan, what was yours? Mine was a bald eagle. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> before you said it had an erection, it was a. Uh, skimming the water so that kind of, <laughs> like yeah, reverse, change things like a reverse shark situation going on exactly <laughs> so then it was dragging a little bit it was out trolling yeah, yeah. <laughs> well oh, so why a golden eagle sam i don't know i i think golden eagles are cooler than bald eagles so that's what always pops in my head first why is that they're bigger and they the coloring is cool like they're they're all like a it's like a brown blonde, like bronze mix. Um, yeah. Wait, is that is that the eagle that's in rescuers down under? I believe that would be a golden eagle. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Oh yeah, actually. yeah. That movie kicks ass. No, <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. even know about it. Have it's you watched that movie lately? Yeah, I I made uh, my nieces watch it like a year ago. 
Nice. And they thought it was awesome. And I tried yeah, to make Carrie yes. watch it. And she's like, I don't, I don't understand it. But she watches the aristocrats, which I don't <laughs> understand that at all. Yeah. This, yeah. Um, no, the <laughs> rescuers down under, uh, there's a lot less uh character and plot development than you would imagine <laughs> you remember uh, when you were a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I just yeah. remember wanting to fly all the time. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the one with the condor too? Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Albatross. Uh, Albatross, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was John Candy, right? If I remember. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Nolan, why why was your eagle flying so close to the water? <laughs> I think because I like the water. Okay. I don't know. Is there is there a secret meaning here? <laughs> does, does this, yeah. Is there like a is does there an eagle? Is, does the eagle have? Is there like something magical you're going to tell us about imagining an eagle? Yeah. Can you analyze us? <laughs> I mean, putting putting your wiener in the water. <laughs> <laughs> something said I, I would love the water a lot too i think if, <laughs> i don't know I, was thinking, I saw guys talking about this on on a podcast these comedians and they just they just kept rolling with it and i just thought it was hilarious nice. and then i was like oh man what i wonder if sam or nolan would think about the philadelphia eagles <laughs> the, the whole football team the whole, has an erection. The whole football team has a giant boner. It's like all I thought of was Carson Wentz. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. No, I don't know if you should even go down this road, but I wonder. I wonder if he throws a touchdown and just is like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling something down there. I love touching, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, the way no one likes water." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No. Oh man. So so uh why do you think it why do you think it's so hard for us to for as you get older to stay in contact? And I know like distance is a huge thing, but I, I kept thinking about college and how we like we grew for five years. We saw each other every single day, which I think is why we still have this crazy connection because mm-hmm. doing a lot of these podcasts, there's been a lot of talk about how growth binds people a lot. And I, I mean from 18 to 24 there was this massive growth for me at least and i'm sure you guys too but Mm -hmm. why do do you still feel like there's this massive growth happening in your guys's life right now or or is it just happening in different places or did it slow down after a while i think it's in different places like later now we're in our 30s it's like your career and then our wives things like that you spend more time on yeah but I feel like things like this can definitely bring us back together more. We need to definitely continue this because I feel like that's been missing in my life as you guys and like just the brotherhood that we've had forever. It's just been lacking. Yeah. Cause didn't you just, you, you sent us a picture of that two years ago, you were talking about how to stay in contact with people more. Yeah. I was just like brainstorming on my phone one night of like doing this exact thing, same thing. So it's like funny that you like brought it up. That's awesome. But it took two years to even think about her to like make it happen. <laughs> I know. Which sucks. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever frequency you put out there when you wrote that note, like it just, you know, traveled a while and then yeah, it just took a while to get there. Head. Yeah, I'm four hours away, man. It took <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took a bit. Snail mail. Yeah. yeah. Uh on my end, like as far as growth goes, I felt like post college, I had like in another, I mean, we've been out of college for 10 years now. Uh and like I felt like I had like another like giant run, like a decade of like just con- kind of continuous growth. And it wasn't until like the last like year, year and a half that I felt like I like kind of leveled off and like have been maintaining rather than like a massive, like constant change. Yeah. Um, yeah that's at least in my life. Mm-hmm. But I've been like, I've talked to you about this, Sam, like, do you feel like the growth has been a lot of fun throughout or do you think it's been tough you know because because like i felt like losing this if i would have filled my bucket up i think there could have been growth but it could have felt good you know where there's a lot of this pole vault you know for or train for five hours a day and then now you're running a business and now you have to work you know all freaking day non-stop sleep social media all this stuff and it was like there was a lot of growth and grinding going on but there wasn't this yeah. like bucket filling growth i don't know if that makes any sense do you guys feel like that too? Yeah. I feel like, yeah, like it was career based instead of like relationship based. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think just, you know, it's just as time goes, like that's, you start to focus on different things. Like, I think that, I think one thing we should touch on, like, while we 
talk tonight is um, like all of us at one point, like we all had this thing we were hyper-focused on, which was track and field. And then that ended. And Sean, obviously mm. you did a lot longer than Nolan and I, but like when that ends, like the headspace after that is you're kind of just trying to figure out what the hell to do. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, after Absolutely. that. I mean, cause like, like you said, all of a sudden you lose that, like, you know, kind of built in family um, that you had for so many years. And then it's just like, you feel like you just get tossed out into outer space, like on your own. And you're just trying to like grasp at lines to hold on to it a little bit mm-hmm. and then figuring out which direction you need to actually go to kind of progress in life, career, relationships, all that stuff. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, for me, the doing the track thing, there's, there's a whole, it's kind of messy for me, you know, with uh, not being good enough. I got a lot of that crap in me. That's like trying to figure that out. But what I missed the most was just the community part of it. I didn't really realize that. Like Mm -hmm. I did, I did track past you guys where I was training alone. I was still doing track. I was training, I was going, but it, it, it kind of sucked. <laughs> like, right. And I, yeah. and if Riley was here, I'm sure he'd say something similar. Like you do the grind, you go in nice really early. And then, you know, you go to these meets by yourself. And if, you know, it's just this weird thing. But when we were at NDSU, it always felt like you'd go to the track, you'd see all your friends and then everyone would be jacked to see you and you'd be jacked to see them. And then you'd go mm-hmm. to the dining center afterwards and they'd still be there and you'd still be friends. And then you might do a little bit of homework and then you go to a party or something, or you go downtown and, you know, throw some darts or whatever, whatever it is. And then they're just there. It's like you have this college is weird like that, where you have this giant yeah. community of people. And then as we get older, like I don't have that anymore. And I, but I wish yeah. I still did. <laughs> you know, I don't know where to find it. <laughs> We're right here. Yeah. <laughs> I would say too. I think uh, the, the thing too, is like when we were on the team, we we're all focused on like the same thing. And like, we were all like, yeah, we're working on track and it's all the same thing. And then now, like Sam said, when it's done, everyone's just like, shit, now what? And then it's like, <laughs> it's like a year and a half of that until you kind of like, okay, well now this is life. And I guess we got to work and like do that stuff. And it's just a big void in your life. It's weird. Do you still feel like that you guys at all? Like you're still trying to fill that hole <clears throat> from track or is that gone for you guys? I don't feel like I'm trying to fill the hole from track. I just, I feel like I'm constantly trying to find uh, actual purpose in like the direction that I'm going, you know, obviously, Same. you know, obviously like now being married, don't have kids yet, but being married, like, you know, part of my focus is being a good husband. And like, that's obviously gives me purpose in life, but like, I've, I've always been a project guy and I always need, <laughs> you know, like I always need something like way bigger than me to be focused on, to feel like I'm moving forward. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's, you know, like I so still trying to figure that out in the last 12 months, two years. I don't know. <laughs> we've, yep. Sean, you and I have talked and Nolan, we've talked about this, you know, at, at nauseum probably, but like just kind of being lost in this whirlwind of social media, like as far as, you know, what I do is creating content and being, you know, having to be on, a million platforms at once and trying to manage all of that and then still like <clears throat> be good at being in a relationship and then like if, trying to be creative and then sneaking out to do something creative and then you know coming yep. back and like trying to turn the brain off when like oh all of a sudden it's 7 43 on a thursday and you like get an idea and you're fired up and it's like well it's not really the time to, time to do that, you know? Sam, I, I completely get that like being a little bit not anywhere near you but shooting photos and stuff too for companies where it's like oh this is like the perfect opportunity the perfect place but it's like the vibe of whoever you're with Mm -hmm. is not the right situation (laughs) you got to balance that because it's like not everyone else wants to work to make that happen right (laughs) necessarily sometimes everything falls into place and everyone's jacked about it and it's like yeah let's do it but yeah for you i'm sure that's super hard it gets complicated. I just like uh, constantly. I like you know. I definitely. I need to hire somebody. <laughs> like I. I uh, <laughs> well, what's doing... cool is when the three of us get together. It's just like, like yeah, we're yeah, all I... like firing on Let's the cylinders. Go. Like, oh, that's sweet. Let's do it, and it's like fun for all of us. Yeah, yeah. We, we've said that a million times. Like when mm-hmm. we did that hunt, you know, uh, a few years ago. It's like we mm-hmm. just pulled out the drone. And we're like, wouldn't it be cool if we could fly through this tent at full speed? You know, like yeah, <laughs> and we're. Like, and where I think a lot of people would go, that's dangerous. We shouldn't do that. And then it puts like a wall up, right? But for some reason, when we're together, there it's 
it's only opening each other's doors to like yeah. to, to go crazy. And yeah. that's that, but that's what I'm kind of trying to talk about is like, that's where those bucket filling things where you go, mm-hmm. this doesn't even feel like work anymore. And I almost feel guilty. It feels so good to be doing this stuff. Right. So, no. And Sean, I would say you definitely in my entire life of knowing you have opened doors for me always, whether oh. it was pole, pole vaulting, then mountain biking. And just like, you were always like, yeah, you can do that. Or like, I bet you can do that. You know? <laughs> well, it, and, but you open the door too, because mm-hmm. I, I still try and do that with people. And they're like, ah, maybe not today. Or I don't, I don't know about that. Or like you said, right. when you were talking about being with a certain group of people, it's it, you just get doors shut. So like, right. Yeah. Your yeah. environment's huge. And that's why I like, I, again, thanks for doing this guy. I'm already like, <laughs> yeah. kind of jacked to be doing it. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is super fun. Yeah. So, um, so with, uh, the social media kind of content stuff that you both are doing, like, how do you, how do you decide when to be creative and like when to put that down for the day, you know, instead of just going with it? Cause I know for me personally, if I have an idea and if I don't operate on it right away, it kind of fizzles away. And I don't know if creative people don't understand that. Like, Oh, that was a really good idea yesterday. And then you wake up in the morning, you're like, yeah, I mean, that idea kind of sucked, but it could have been great if you tackled it right off the bat. If you just went with it. If you just, yeah go yeah uh i mean fortunately like in what i do a lot of the time i can try to dive into it right away um i just gotta be uh somewhat held back if it's you know if it's an idea that's gonna like take me away from home for (laughs) like it used to be like i'd come up with an idea be like i need to be gone for six weeks to pull this off (laughs) 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 see you later uh and but like that's really not the case anymore so i mean fortunately like not having a a full-time job i can typically dive into stuff if i am feeling creative um but it's it it gets there's it's always just finding that balance um Mm -hmm. you know i think I think, uh, but you're totally right. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have had an idea where I'm like, this is it. Like, this is the next like stream. This is the next business. This is the next whatever. And then like, I sit on it for three, four days. And then I like almost forget about it (laughs) entirely. Um, Yeah. So it's, I don't know. That's a weird rabbit hole to go down because I've probably forgot more good ideas than I've actually accomplished. I know I found this old journal that I had where I just write ideas down or my phone and I go, Oh my God, if I just did some of these <laughs> good, yep. good things will still happen probably. Well, I, I think the three of us are a little bit of perfectionists too. And that kind of stops us from, well, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to do it. But at least for me, that's, that happens to me where it's like, ah, it's, I'm not going to be able to do it perfectly now. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to do it until I can. And then two years later we have this call. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been i like i call myself a recovering perfectionist now because I, I was really wrestling with that because again part of this thing was to see what barriers are preventing me from from moving and growing and a, and a lot of it was perfectionism and so I, I heard someone say um don't let perfection get in the way of good enough and i've i have that written on top of my laptop now mm-hmm. so every, t- every time I'm like i'm not ready to do that i'm like well I'm going to judge the shit out of it, but if someone else sees it, they're going to think it, or they might think it's 110%. And even if they don't, do I value growth or perfection more? And you can't grow without failing a whole bunch of times kind of Mm -hmm. a thing. So kind of like with this, I didn't, I don't know how this is going to go. You know, I've been talking to mental health experts for a year and a half on this thing. And now let's bring in my friends and talk about, (laughs) let's talk about, uh, Eagles with erections, you know, right now and and see what happens, you know, just cause I think it'd be fun. I think you're on to something here. Yeah. Yeah. There might be. Yeah. So what kind Uh, of project are you go, Sam? Oh no. I was just gonna say like, I've been trying to, uh, I felt like in 2022, you know, I felt like it was like the hang the COVID hangover. Uh, I felt like we lost two years and then 22 was like this. Uh, nobody really knew what direction any of it was going to go. You know, like there was a lot of negative talk in the media and everything about massive recession coming or whatever. And like, as it's all churned forward, it like, you know, inflation happened, but it doesn't seem as bad as they were predicting, at least at the moment, you know? And so, but like, I felt like I was, I felt like I kept getting stuck in this loop of like, I was 
consuming a lot of media and like, you know, telling my justifying it, telling myself I was trying to come up with good ideas to create content and like do all these different things. And so in, you know, now we're in a new year and obviously, you know, everyone that actually does anything tells you don't, you know, have new year's resolutions because if you're going to start them, you might as well start them at any day of the week or whatever. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so this isn't really new year's resolutions, but it's I, like, as the month has gone on, I've been trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to try to do this year? That's different. So I can kind of break out of that, like feedback loop of just like consuming content and consuming media. And like, um, like what, what things actually, like you said, fill your bucket. And so one of the things I wrote down today, which is an impossible task, but that's why I wrote it. It's create more than you consume. And like, I'm a photographer. I, you know, I do mostly photography, video content, you know, whatever. But like, I, I really enjoy, like when I can get into a space where I can really nerd out, like on an idea for a photo or, you know, whatever, like I love that. And, but then what happens is I, you know, end up like, oh, okay, I'm going to like look for the right song to put it to or whatever. And then like four hours later, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching some guy in Thailand build a dam to catch fish, you know, like, <laughs> like you know, it's so, but, but I figured if I would write down, create more than you consume, it might be a good bench that I can jump off and go, okay, like I'm leaving, I'm just going to leave my phone here, leave my phone in the truck and I'm going out and I'm going to shoot photos for the next six hours. And I'm just going to like, see where the day takes me with my camera rather than see where the day takes me with my phone. Like I was actually researching, I, I was like, how much does it cost to add a phone line where I'll just get a flip phone. And then I only use my smartphone for posting content and, you know, like editing stuff together if I'm doing it real quick. And then like, I'll text all my friends, like close friends and business clients. Like you can call me on this number or text me. Yeah. Yeah. And but like, just not have the availability of Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, you know, any I'm, of it. I'm laughing because I just had this conversation with Carrie. Like I just need to get off my phone and put all of the social media stuff that I need for work on my computers and then not use it, my phone anymore. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Yep. It's yeah. I, I feel worse when I watch all that stuff. Probably Every like you yep. too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a video the other day where this, it was on TikTok, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> which is terrible, but it was this guy saying that he would put his phone in black and white. And then that way, when you're looking at Instagram or TikTok, it's just not as interesting. So that you found himself using it less. But yeah, I had a pole vault friend do that a few years ago, and it worked. She, yeah, she she could see the the amount of time she spent on it, and there was a direct correlation for when she turned it into black and white to when everything cut off because everything's so shiny and fast. So exactly, if you take colors out of it. They're like, I'd rather look at real life and see some real colors. <laughs> at that yep. point. Yep. It's like if you drink black coffee, you probably only have a cup or two. But if you put creamer in it, you drink a whole pot. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Sam, aren't you the one who told me that you don't even like coffee? You like creamer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, now, I'm addic now I'm addicted to energy drinks. It's like it's just <laughs> what? How'd you move on to energy? I, oh energy God, drinks, I don't know. I found Ghost Energy, and they yeah. got me. Yeah, it's just. Oh, uh, yeah. Celsius, yeah. those things are dangerous too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. I probably need to decaffeinate. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'll make you create more. It'd be good to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Are you that, or I'll just have like crippling anxiety and I'll just be stuck. Yeah. Right. Did you did you start that yet? Like the uh, every time I'm, I would feel like I want to consume, I start creating, or was that? Did you say that happened? I today? literally wrote it today. Okay. Like, yeah, I'd been kind of like trying to figure out like what what I wanted to write down. I've been really like really focused on specific items that I'm writing. And, you know, so like, you know, I don't know if you guys choose a, a word for the year or not, but I chose the word move for 23. And I figured it would mm -hmm. just be like a way for me to like spend more time doing what I actually do, which is be outside, like in the woods doing the things I love. Um, but it, then you can use it for everything else. Like, you know, move on to the next idea, move on to that next piece of content, move mm -hmm. on to, you know, um, <clears throat> So, but that's my word for the year. And then I've been just trying to like focus everything that I'm putting in my subconscious, like around that. And so it's trying to simplify things and yeah, but I wrote it today. Just create more than I consume. I love that, dude. I'm going to have to steal like that it. too. Yeah. Cause it's been hard. I, I've done this for about six months now, but I don't even look at my phone for at least two hours after I wake up and I just, 
nothing could probably be that important, I figured. But it was scary at first because like, what if Carrie's calling me from work or she didn't make it or something, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I, like I cheat a little bit. I go, do I have a text message? Nope. All right. And then I put it down and I, and <laughs> nice. I don't look at anything. Because as yeah. soon as I go, it's like, well, how did my post go from yesterday? Did, did I get any book sales? And it turns into like Nolan was saying where or Sam, where you're watching some dude, you know, fishing without any pants on or something, you know, and you're like, how the <laughs> frick did I get here? And then an hour goes but by. Sam's Instagram on. is a little different than yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, just a little bit. He's building dams, I guess. You don't I even, even want to see my feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so, so that's been like one thing I've tried to do. Have you guys done any of that cold shower or ice bath stuff or tried? Oh, my God. The last five days in a row, I have done it. Yeah, it's weird. I just started doing it. How do you feel? It's awesome, actually. As yeah. much as you hear that, you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm sure it's awesome," but it's like, I was actually thinking about this this morning when I was doing it. Sean, you remember when we in track we do the hot cold cycle? Yeah, hot I called, the, ice bath, I called hot it the tub. flush. Yeah, the flush. Yeah, you get that same like tingly feeling, and then it's like you get kind of lightheaded, but then like when you're done it's like you're ready for the day it's pretty awesome so do you have a tub or are you just doing it in the, in the shower i'm just doing it in the shower okay and i'm like you know everyone's like so hardcore like you gotta go five minutes in a 30 degree ice no i just do like i started with a minute and now i'm doing two minutes and it's probably only like 40 degrees but yeah. <laughs> you know it's not freezing but it's it's pretty sweet i've i've been doing it for a year and a half just two minutes in really? a cold shower yeah I, yeah exactly and it got like i stopped drinking coffee because i didn't need it kind of like you were saying yeah and then i just bought a like a, an inflatable ice tub and i figured i could just throw snow in it in the winter and then when the summer mm -hmm. comes i'll figure it out or just refill it with stuff but it hasn't showed up yet but i'm really i'm kind of pumped to see if it changes between the shower and like the ice tub part what have you found for benefits i i Almost the same thing I find if I'm meditating. Like if I miss a day in the shower, it's hard for me to focus and everything just, I feel kind of heavy and sticky. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like mentally mm -hmm. sticky where things aren't flowing and moving as well. And like it's kind of low, but when I'm in there or, or when I get out, I immediately am up and I'm oh, yeah. ready to go. And yeah, I, I was, I started it because of, um, there was this medication I was on few years ago uh, where it improved dopamine and norepinephrine. And that was the only reason to take that SSR. was for those two reasons. And then I saw the benefits. Like if you take a cold shower, norepinephrine and dopamine go through the roof and you feel really mm -hmm. great. I'm like, wait, so I can not be on these crazy meds that give you these like insane side effects and just stand in a shower for two minutes in the morning and get the same benefits. So I was like, I'm going to get work better, honestly. Yeah, it, it might. I <clears throat> Now it feels now. And I don't know if you're here yet, but it's almost, that's my norm is the shower. Uh, and when I don't do it, then I'm like, oh, this, this isn't normal anymore. So, okay, so you, like you brought up your baseline. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's the best way to say that. I was failing miserably at explaining. No, it. that's cool. I'm definitely not there yet. It feels like every day that I've done it so far is like, holy shit, that was awesome. So yeah. it's like, it's still like bringing me up. Have you noticed, <laughs> have you noticed that your shower is sometimes colder some days than the other? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that sucks. Uh -huh. Like this morning, it was a cold one. I'm like, oh god damn it. <laughs> yeah. So do you? Are you guys taking a hot shower first, or just straight cold shower? I so for I'd, me, oh, I yeah. go like I started like not hot, but like lukewarm, and then I turn it cold once I'm in. Yeah. Do you I just jump in? I started that way. Now I'm just like cold, and then I brush my teeth while I'm in there, so I know I'm brushing my teeth for two minutes too. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's perfect yeah that's great yeah, i haven't dude. i haven't been doing it yet but sean i feel like the difference you're going to feel between doing the shower and then the actual cold plunge is like i felt like when we did ice bath all the time in track like that that feeling of being like fully immersed oh yeah like in it you know for whatever 10 12 15 minutes or whatever it was like i feel like you get like well first of all it's so much colder than what the shower is going to put out mm -hmm. um and then like, it's going to take your body that much longer to warm you back up, which is what releases all of those, everything, cortisol, right, right, right. norepinephrine, mm -hmm. dopamine. Yeah. It's crazy. They were saying you only need to be in there 11 minutes. I don't know if you guys saw that too. So yeah, per week. 11 minutes per week. So yeah, two minutes a day, you're, you're set. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, kind of insane. 
Yeah. I'm excited. I bought some pink booties because I remember back in college. Yes. You know, my feet were, I was hurt the worst. So yeah, yes. I bought the ugliest pink booties I could find. So my nice. <laughs> I yeah. remember like both you both you remember guys, those like, gross booties oh my god and they were like slimy throwing them on each other <laughs> and they were all track athletes so it's like how do we not get athletes foot or exactly whatever it was. yeah <laughs> not to yeah, bring those, all that up those were disgusting like they're like the wrap thing like you know like oh, oh were, i forgot the, about the wrap <laughs> yeah because there was the booties there that were booty, like yep. some someone's mom made um of, <laughs> i think they're old like neoprene waiters you know it's somebody like yeah cut up. somebody yeah. stitching them in the socks yeah but oh. yeah but like the wraps were was what we used all the time um i don't know i'm sure scott was like those booties are gross i use the wraps so like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> same thing <laughs> but huh yeah. now i'm kind of wishing i bought some of those wraps i remember i forgot all about those things man that's mm -hmm. those are pretty incredible yeah mm -hmm. i'm pumped for this thing to show up i don't we'll see i'll, I'll keep you guys in the loop how that yeah. goes but, yeah i'm curious yeah. to see how long it lasts outside like if it's an inflatable one yeah well they they said it was pretty heavy duty but it was either pay like 130 bucks for that one or five thousand dollars for a tub you know right <laughs> which i think i'm gonna stick with this thing <laughs> yeah i think i think uh you could get a galvanized stock tank for about Ninety-five dollars. Yeah. That was the original plan. Carrie yelled yeah. at me. She's like, "There's not gonna be enough space in her garage to have a giant tank in there." And I was like, "All right, I'll get this inflatable one that I can like, <laughs> if I ever don't want to use it again." Like, like, like All right. they're not they're not very big. <laughs> it's gonna sit in like a horse trough for a while. I was yeah. I was like yeah. literally at the farming market going, "All right, I can That's buy this." What you need? Yeah, this man. is gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna figure this out. Because if you've seen yeah. some of the other things people are doing, they're buying like deep freezes. Yep. And then they caulk them up. I don't yep. know if you guys saw this. Mm -hmm. And they're like homemade ice tubs and they just mm -hmm. chill out in those things. But yeah. I've seen uh, there's a couple like professional mountain bikers I follow and they use like giant Yeti coolers. Really? <laughs> yeah, like hey, Sam's what's got the biggest one of... they make? Yeah. Yeah. Well you could use you could use the two ten or like the four the four twenty <laughs> and like and they that would just, be way they big just enough. sit and it goes like, you know, between your belly but a little above your belly button or something. Yeah. And that would hold wow. that would literally hold ice water for like two weeks exactly you get pretty nasty probably <laughs> i would imagine I don't, I don't know not if you were like if you had it in the garage and then you just like filled it with water and then like had like a foot of ice on the top you don't like you don't think people sitting in it and sweat and skin and and stuff in there would just turn that water really nasty really yeah, quick. it's just you i mean it's cold it's not like it's growing anything <laughs> that's true <laughs> i mean yeah. i keep i, keep, I, I, I keep, don't want to sit in sam's eye stuff <laughs> I, I, keep, yeah. I, keep, I wouldn't i wouldn't use any of my current ones i mean i keep dead animals in there for like two weeks so like i would yeah you know. <laughs> they gotta feel them pretty good <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're north and high man super high well well <laughs> mine is <laughs> mine is <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah no Nolan, do you have any goals or did you pick anything for this year i know uh I... we did actually talk about it a little bit mine was i didn't i guess i kind of picked a word but my theme was going to be like consistency okay to either like try to work out more consistent be more consistent in life essentially so why, why i'm you a pick... little different <clears throat> oh i'm sorry uh, i interrupted you man just just because i think like consistency you, you build on things and it just that's how you get somewhere i guess but i'm a little different than you guys like i have like a a corporate kind of job so like i have to go to that every day but the things that fuel me are like my photography and like other things like that so i wanted to be more consistent with that stuff because sometimes it's like i just get stuck in my day-to-day -day and then come home and i don't like feel too motivated to go out and shoot photos or like do that kind of thing but so i just want to like try to do it at least once a week and then hopefully twice a week and then just keep building on it. What do you, th what do you think will come out of that? Or what do you, what do you hope and comes out of that? For me, it's just the fulfillment. Like I know it's fun for me to do that. Like, I don't think I'm really tracking on to be like, like Sam, like to be professional in that, but it's just like a fun side thing for me. So it's always fun to like get new brands and like play with new gear and stuff like that. But for me, it's like taking the photos and getting out and doing the work and going hiking and camping and all that stuff is, it gets you out there. So that's kind of my goal. So, well, I mean, you, you are a professional, you're getting, paid, you're getting paid yeah. to do it. And I know, it's, yeah. I know it's not full time, but to be right. totally honest, you're probably doing it the correct way. Yeah. 
uh, it's, you know, like it's, you have the consistency of, of a job, which you also like doing, but then you get to like really fill that up on the top by doing this thing that you like doing and people actually pay you for it and give you free stuff to go do the things that you like doing. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It, it is good, but I would like to take that balance from like job photography and like get it a little bit more like that. Yeah. Just, just add a little bit more to it. Yeah. Would you, would you ever think about quitting your job if, if that photography got high enough? Like on the other side? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I was just <laughs> yeah. wondering. Yeah. I mean, I, I do like my job, but it's also like be way more fun to work for yourself. Like maybe you guys would say that differently, but I, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Yeah, Sam and well, I've talked about this a yeah. lot. I know, actually. and I've I've talked with both of you about that. It like I get the pros and cons, but it's like early on, I I was like, oh my god, no one got a real job. I can't, I can do whatever <laughs> I want. And now I'm kind of like, man, some of that consistency <laughs> would be great, yeah, right? Right about now. <laughs> but for me, yeah. it gets mundane. So it's like, what do you need? Yeah, Carrie, Carrie and I talk about this a lot because she's like in a normal tradition. I shouldn't say normal. I don't even know what a normal job is. Like a traditional you know, nine to five or she works 12 to 12s, but like consistent. Mm -hmm. And then like right before I came down to this podcast, I was like, did you think I was slacking today? Like, cause she was home all day. And I, I launched these like bracelets for uh pole vault team hoot today mm -hmm. and they went really well. So like a ton of orders came in and then I was like, oh, which is great. But at the same time, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, fudge, <laughs> I got to. I'm not going to get all these out. <laughs> you know, so Carrie helped me and we spent probably an hour just packaging before we shipped them out. Like we had to just put them in these little plastic baggies and make them look nice to uh, like put in a normal baggie so we could ship it out. And we watched the office while we're putting this thing in there. And I'm like, we were literally doing work today. Does it feel like we did? And she's like, we were watching, we were watching the office all day. I was like, but here's, but the difference is, is if we were, if I was just packaging these things and didn't have the office in, it would have taken the same amount of time. I might as well have like something fun going on in the background. And that's the one of the perks of my job. Like I get to do For that. For sure. And she's like, well, I don't get to do that at work. And then we had this conversation about why does it, why does work always have to feel hard? And I don't know if you guys feel like that either, but if I'm enjoying it, sometimes I'm like, I'm not doing enough or I have to do more because it's too fun or, or the bucket is filling instead of depleting. Do you yeah. guys feel like that with like what you choose to do, like in either of your jobs or hobbies or projects? I think the, the pitfall that I get into all the time is come to a point now where like my, <clears throat> all of my income is based on documenting the things that I love to do. And so every time I go out to do those things, uh, it, it is work. Um, but then sometimes like, I just don't, want to do the like i just don't want to bring a camera like i just want to go yeah and, you know so i want to take a i just want to have a weekend where i go out and like i right soak in you know just sitting in a tree or sitting in a duck blind or whatever but uh when i do that then i feel guilty that i'm not doc <laughs> documenting it and creating content and shooting photos because uh that's what i do for a living so it's a I that's that's exactly what sam's saying or sean is saying yeah do you run into that you want to make it hard with what you do yeah in, in a way but um yeah my job's a little different it's it's so free flowing that most of the time it doesn't seem like work because i'm outside a lot during the summer and yeah. stuff but it can definitely when it's like this time of year we're like sitting down having meetings all day then yeah it sucks <laughs> what what about on the photography side do, do you feel like sam does where at first it's like oh, i get to take pictures of um the stanley stuff that they sent me but did it ever get to a point where you're going i would just like to be camping right now and not have to take photos of of things or definitely i would yeah. say even this past year i did a lot less product stuff just because of that um and then sometimes i mean i'm sure sam gets this but there's like deadlines or you feel like they sent you all the stuff you really need to turn around or that you know when they do pay you like okay, I really need to do this. I haven't had the opportunity. So now I got to go force myself to try and make it happen. And then usually that's not very creative either because you're forcing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. There's nothing worse than trying to like set up an, an authentic outdoor camping, hiking, biking, hunting, fishing scene when you're not actually doing like, you're not actually freely doing that activity. Yep. Um, yeah. 
It just you know, doesn't look natural. No, it's, you know, you're like, and it's not fun either. You're right. Yeah. It's <laughs> no. just so dumb. Like, you know, you're like all your, like, it's like, all I need is a photo of this, whatever tree stand or whatever it is, you know, it's like, I just, okay. I just am going to have it in the, like leaning in the, in the back of my truck, just so I can get like a shot of it quick or whatever. But then when you, when you're not actually hunting, the back of your truck never looks like you're hunting unless you're hunting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, like, yeah. I don't know how to explain that to people, but like, even the best photographers, you cannot fake, like, you can't just like, I have to like, be like, I'm going hunting today. And then I like load my truck and then I'll go hunting and then I can get that shot. I just can't. It's hundred like, percent. Right. Oh yeah. But, uh, I mean, which is good. I get to go hunting then, but I, <laughs> but yeah, like sometimes like you just need quick stuff and it just feels so fake. And like on the other, the crazy thing is that that's all here in your head because mm-hmm. on the other end, nobody would ever know that you're thinking <laughs> but like while you're shooting the photos like oh this is so dumb this is just yeah. so dumb well but, this is sam we've done that before remember the park over oh yeah north? <laughs> yeah it's the only place with a couple pine trees so we go there because it looks <laughs> looks like you're not in fargo <laughs> <laughs> yep oh it's yeah. weird do you guys do, mm-hmm. do you think it's hard i mean i have a theory on this but do you, why do you guys think it's hard to just to set those up and just not allow them to be what they are. I think because it's uh, like we all like doing these things, we grew up doing them. Right. Or like, at least like for the last 10, 15 years, like we've been doing all of the things that we love to do, like very hardcore. Um, And so when you're just trying to like, whatever, like fake a quick shot or whatever, it just feels so, unauthentic like in your own head that i think that's yeah. that's what makes it hard you're like oh well where would i typically put this if i was just going out to do this for a day and you're like well you know i could put it here but then it looks dumb in the photo you know it's like it's just this you start to like play head games with yourself um on something that probably isn't an issue at all it's just it doesn't look right to yourself and if you feel like that might translate down downstream so at least that's mm-hmm. me so for you it's like a it's just an inauthentic thing where you're, I don't know, you're, my favorite photos of you that you've ever taken. And it just seems like they, there were moments you just captured instead of moments you've created, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's hard to do that for a product. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah. yeah. And that's typically why I tell everyone, you know, I, I always tell people I'm a photographer in the hunting industry and they're like, oh, you do a lot of wildlife stuff. And I just say, yeah. I'm ma- mainly a hunting lifestyle photographer because that is the goal. Like I, and that, that's always been the challenge I put on myself is I am trying to tell a story in a single image because most of the time that's what the only thing people are going to see. And so it's mm-hmm. you're right. It's like, you're trying to be in the right spot at the right time to capture that single moment. That's going to be like, yep, that's the one like that's, well, that's and those photos that capture people's audience are like, they captivate people it's because they're like gritty or dirty or like real and like that person was actually doing that and when you try to fake that it's just like that i don't know why and maybe you're right maybe it is just us seeing that and it's like that's not real (laughs) most other people are like oh cool do do you think it'd be better if you were able to i don't know why i'm pushing on this so hard probably because i'm i I make videos you know it's the same kind of thing but Mm -hmm. like i did a documentary for this fire department where they wanted to help with promotion. And I wrestled kind of with the same things you guys are talking about quite a bit where I'm like, I'm here to just capture what you guys do. And if you don't like what you see, like there's part of me that goes, that's the truth. That's what's happening. And so, but, uh, they, they're asking to polish it up. So people will come in and then part of me is going, well, this is a recruiting video, right? To, to, and to keep people in the system. Cause what ends up happening with the firefighters that I learned was they would come in for like three months and they go, Oh, this sucks. And then they would leave. And so they had this retention thing that was happening. That was really bad. I mean, what if you just show exactly what it is, then you're going to attract the people who know exactly what it is, know exactly what they're getting into. And then they'll stick around instead of going, we're going to fight fires and we're going to, and we're going to do this and we're going to rip cars apart and it's going to be awesome. And instead of just go, we actually pick up ladies who fall down more often than we fight fires. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's the gig. <laughs> and if people know going in, so I kind of pitched it like that. Like, let's just be authentic about this because I got, like, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it when people were asking me to 
make them look bigger and better than they ever mm -hmm. were. I just, it wasn't in my DNA, which sucks. Cause I think I could have made a lot of money <laughs> doing that. But well, Sean, feel... that's you, man. Like for the whole time I've known you, you're so authentic. And like when you started with your GoPro and you started doing video and stuff, it was just, you showed everything all the time. And that's, I think why people enjoy it. Yeah. I think about that though. There's, there's a line between like how much you let people in at the same time you know because uh mm -hmm. there's this whole thing in psychology where you, there's like a circle and you're in the middle of the circle and then there's a circle around that circle and that's like your wife or you know your, your really close friends if they're that close as close as your wife is and then like the <laughs> next one you know it everything branches out and i guess what i did with that vlog because I just got out of that mental health hospital, right? Where I was like, I feel awesome. Everything's great because <laughs> I let a lot of the stuff go. I just like let everybody in. And then it got weird when I'd go to, to Reno or I was at the state fair one year and somebody was like, hey, Sean, how's Squish doing? I was like, I don't freaking know who this person is. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Talking about my dog. This is kind of weird. <laughs> so like I wrestle with that though too, because I, I think there's this, there's this gift in authenticity and being vulnerable and being who you are. And if you can show that, I think it allows other people to show that. And I think that's where this connection happens. That's like what we have, all three of us. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let people in, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm trying to say I'm erring on the side of probably getting hurt by letting more people in than, um, you know, not, but what I keep finding is that I need breaks. So I'll let people in for a few months and then I need like six months off from people. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it's too yeah. Close. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing there is, I mean, I don't do it on the scale that you do, Sean, like where you've like basically shown people your life, but I, I typically engage with people. Like if they send me a message, ask me questions or whatever, like, you know, I'm, I basically respond to everybody who gets a hold of me. Um, and that's great. Uh, most of the time, but there's, there, <laughs> there's always times where, um, people take it too far. And like, you need to have, like, for me, like I have to like, basically have a boundary where I just like either, you know, you know, say, see you later. Like, you know, like, Oh, you know, hope you have a good season, you know, like trying to like cut yeah. it off or whatever, because <clears throat> it gets to the point where they, they feel like they know you better than they do. And then yeah. you start to get continuous, like engagement through that medium, through that personal like questioning mm -hmm. and, and whatever. And like, you know, it, it ends up taking up a lot of your time um, and energy that needs to be spent on people that are in your inner circle and that you do know. Are, yeah. Then right, right. not people yeah. who are on the fringe that you've never actually met. Cause mm -hmm. does that fill your bucket, Sam talking to those people or I, does it end up taking energy out of it? It, uh, it fills my bucket to be able to answer questions and get people fired up about stuff or like when they're jacked, when I respond with like actual information or actual like insight on something, that's great. And that exchange like really makes me happy when it goes beyond that. Like I start to like lose energy and I, you know, a lot of times I feel like a dick because like, yeah. I just get to the point where like, I'll get a message and I'll be like, Oh yeah, it's like, you know, uh, yeah. I'm not going to answer that today <laughs> or ever, mm -hmm. like, I, you know, and that's bad, but like, I just, you know, you don't have time for it. Um, can either be uh, one of my good buddies who creates content for a living said it best. He's like, we can either, be meeting up with people and, you know, doing meet and greets, or we can be doing the thing that people actually want to see. We don't have time mm. for both. So, right. you know, it's just, it's, uh, if, if you want to continue growing in what you do, you need to be doing what you do, not managing everything on the side. Do you guys feel like you have it figured out like what your thing is, like what you're good at? Like, uh, and maybe there's multiple things, but like what, I don't know. I, I don't want to call it a purpose, but the gift you have that you can give to the universe. Do you guys think about that? I don't that? think so. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I don't got it. I, I think, I think I have hints. <laughs> I think I have hints of what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> I just haven't figured out what, what the, the correct Avenue is. What's your hint? So, what, so, what do you got? So you I feel like one, one of my best gifts is connecting people, connecting other people. Um, and I, I think it's because I'm good at forming relationships and building relationships and seeing what people would work well together and being able to connect people who 
would do cool things together you know or if if there's a if there's a brand that's looking for a specific person to do something at this point in my career i typically know the right person who's going to fill that void for for whatever they need and you know if they're like hey i'm thinking about working with this person i can i can point them to like, either say yes or point them to someone else but i i over the last four or five years i've been able to connect some really cool people with other cool people and they've done a lot of cool shit because <laughs> because they both knew me at one point yeah. um so i don't know what i don't know how to take that moving forward i mean obviously just keep doing stuff like that because it's all just going to keep adding but yeah i uh, i don't know what that looks like long term as far as like turning that into a career i i'd agree like we all went to your thanksgiving <laughs> at your house in yeah college. Like, yeah you, you would do the same thing it was yeah you've been doing cool that cool to watch yeah man like that's it's it's in you i don't know what that mm -hmm. i don't know what to call it but we've all seen it or we have at least mm -hmm. right yeah what about you Nolan? how about you sean oh no man. i honestly don't think i'm anywhere near <laughs> figuring my life out so how about you uh i don't i don't know i think I, I keep reverting back to i think i'm really good at seeing the truth and then having courage sometimes not right away but to just say it even though if it's going to burn some things down like i'll just say mm -hmm. it the way i see it and how to, like it, it's scary though so I'm, I'm fighting with it because i think that is probably one of the gifts i have but it doesn't feel good all the time <laughs> if that makes any sense right mm -hmm. like, a lot of times it's necessary maybe yeah well like you know, you know how hard it is for me to call out the mental health system and after it's, it's terrible. And I've been in mm -hmm. it, which it is, but you're going, this thing is freaking huge. And at some other, and there's some other points where it did, it has helped me, but I would say 5% of it maybe has, and the other parts were just garbage. Right. And so you start right. talking about this and just knowing that I've been on social media and YouTube and stuff for 10 years, the backlash that can come right away, whether people don't like what I'm saying because they're reacting instead of responding to the information, it causes pain, <laughs> lots mm -hmm. and lots of pain. Mm -hmm. But I've ridden these waves long enough too to see that, oh, if, if it is the truth, then then it'll, it'll come out. But you can't, you can't just change truths or facts. Like they, they always come out eventually. But I mean, it started with pole vault, right? It was like, Nolan, you'll know this more than Samuel, but it was the Russian model. And this is how you pole vault. Luke has world records and you got to jump the Russian right. model. And I got my thesis in pole vault, researched the crap out of it, talked to these mental or these uh, pole vault experts while I was doing the elite thing. And I was like, Russian style kind of, it doesn't work <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you find these other ways, and which is literally the reason why it's on my book. It's like, there's more than one way to pole vault. Mm -hmm. That's the truth, right? Like no one can decipher that or or challenge that like there there literally is you yep. you learn the physics you coach the physics you jump the physics and everything else is just style points or what how your body manipulates with the physics mm -hmm. and i got a lot of pushback man and I, I don't know if we've ever talked about this but a lot of people didn't like that i was saying <laughs> a lot of i believe it in the pole and there was space. there was less examples of that in the past yeah but now like uh i mean you're talking to a guy who dropped his knee for the first three years of his career. <laughs> right. You know, and Stevie was like, that's wrong. That's wrong. And yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I don't know. But then, um, who is it now that, uh, the young guy who's got the world record. Oh, Mondo. Duplan. Mondo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, big time knee drop and then just crazy swing and like, obviously gets a world record, like way different than how Boopka used to jump. Yeah, it, the goofiest part is is that even when he had the world records, those guys, those Russian guys were like, but if he jumped this way. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so so I, I only bring it up because, uh, yeah, pole vault, pole vault was painful enough, but it's a small pond. And now I'm in this mental health space where I'm talking to these experts mm. who have jobs. Like I had a lady, I don't know if I told you guys this, but she was, I don't know, even know if I should talk about this on here, but I was curious about where pedophiles go if they need help. <laughs> it sounds insane, right? But, As you uh, would be. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going, can I ask you this? 
she's like, you can ask me anything. We're not on the podcast, right? I was like, yeah. And I asked her and she goes, oh. And she literally comes out and just goes, well, um, some think it's a, it's, it's a sexual orientation, the same way as homo, homosexuality. Like, it's just a theory, not what we think, but we're exploring it because that's what science is like. Oh, yeah, cool. And they're like, there are places they can go get help. We don't talk about them because our society doesn't like to talk about pedophiles. So they don't know if they can get help. And there's like all these things that we can't talk about where mm-hmm, maybe right. if you did, you'd be allowed to. And like I, I'm getting like goosebumps talking about it now because I'm like, I don't know if I should be saying this on a podcast that's going out that right. <laughs> should, I, should we have some empathy for pedophiles? Is, you know, like, is it a disorder? Are they wired that way? Did they have sexual, you know, things happen in their childhood that preceded this? Like, I don't know the answers, but I'm curious about it. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, to answer your question, Nolan, that's probably it, but it scares me <laughs> because those types of questions come up and yeah, I get it, it. yeah. And I'm, they're never judgy when they're coming from a pure place. They're just like, why? Like I'm like a little yeah. kid, I guess. Yeah. You're just curious. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't know how to monetize that either. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't be a news anchor. So nope, that's right. for sure. <laughs> it's been cool watching Joe Rogan though, because he's yes. Have you seen the difference when he talks about this types of stuff? He can say whatever he wants, and he brings it up all the time that he feels safe within the podcast, mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. the rest of the world's shitting all over him and trying to take him down. And he's, yeah, yep, yeah. No, he. Uh, I, th- I think he said it best. He was talking about Jordan Peterson, who's under fire right now, like in Canada, like they're you know going to revoke his psychology license, the whole thing, but. Uh, when he's, I mean, he has it too, but there's people that reach escape velocity is how he put it. So he's so big and there's so many people that listen to him and there's like, regardless of what any exterior outlet, whatever is going to say about you, like you're moving so much faster than that, like noise that you'll never get touched by it. Like nothing will ever bring Mm -hmm. you down, Um, which I thought was, yeah, which I thought was really cool, but um, Sean, you were talking about all the mental health stuff you're doing. Yeah. I've, I've been curious if you figured out like, what is, what is the biggest hurdle for people in mental health? Like, is it the fact that the culture doesn't talk about it or is it big pharma or is it doctors that think a certain way? Or is it like, what's the, like, what's the lowest hurdle that people hit quick when they're trying to like yeah. figure their shit out? S- Self awareness. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, I, I try to get there with, like again with pole vault because there was a lot of similarities. Like, what is at the very base the the most important part? And in pole vault, it was well, it's just pole vault at its simplest form is creating and transferring energy. Like that's it. Yep. Are you creating mm-hmm. energy? No. Nope. How can you do that? Are you transferring it? Nope. All right. So how do you do that? At its simplest form, mm-hmm. it seems like with with mental health, it's it's self awareness. And if you don't have self awareness, what happens is you get these conditioning thing or what I, I've been told and read and you know experimented with on myself is that you you get this conditioning when you're a kid, which is essentially a program that's downloaded into your brain, and you become automatic to it. You don't even think about it anymore. So without the awareness of knowing these patterns are happening, they just continue to happen. So the best thing anybody can do is bring this awareness piece into their life and just ask questions. So like part of the cold showers, Nolan, I started to do, Mm -hmm. I noticed that when I was in the shower, I would move a lot or I was brushing my teeth as a way to, I don't want to call it numbing, but distracting myself from being in the shower. I've noticed that too. And that's awareness, right? And so I started not moving until like and just to see what my brain would do and i was like mm-hmm. you gotta get the fuck out of the shower <laughs> That's <what's laughs> still, it's really cold in here and then uh it would stop like hurting in one point and i'd go oh, i'm gonna turn around and do the front now and it's like mm-hmm. i gotta get the fuck out of the shower and i was like oh and i i don't have to get out of the shower and that awareness piece whether it's meditating or whatever you're doing helps people be able to at least um there's it, it, I'm going off on tangents, you guys. I'm sorry, but do sorry. you uh, have you read that book, um, like Man's Search for Meaning? Have you heard of that? Uh-uh. So this this guy was put in a concentration camp, but he was a psychologist at the time. So the whole time he's in there, he is watching everybody else on why people are just quitting 
and ending and like just checking out of their life and just accepting death and why people are fighting and then how people are dealing with suffering and seeing their friends dying and seeing their wife dying in front of them and he's like why are my feelings and so the whole book is about the psychologist's perspective of being in the concentration camps and wow. my biggest takeaway from it was he goes there's this space between um i don't want to mess it up how does he say it uh reaction or no stimulus and response so you have a stimulus of something happening and then your response to it and between the space is where your magic is that's that's where life can change because that's where you have a choice yeah. and so most people have a, a stimulus and they react so he talks about responding instead of reacting and but it starts with that self-awareness just knowing if you're reacting to things or if you're responding to things and so that's so yeah that's the long way of going I think that's always step one. And from a society perspective, I think we're told you can only help yourself if you go to the doctor. And I've been to the doctor a lot and they didn't help me at all. And then when I, right. and I don't want to say they don't help because I've been helped too. But when I started bringing more awareness and going into the painful things and going, there's probably answers within the painful things. That's when they started feeling a lot, a lot, a lot better. And so, and that's why I'm talking to you guys. Cause like, why do it? Why is this barrier here? Oh, I'm not getting enough freedom and having these conversations with people. So, um, yeah, like yeah. it feels good. And I Sean, in your, in, oh, go ahead, uh, no one. Sorry, just quick. In, in your opinion, do you think because you've been in this for in this space for a while, but like post pandemic, do you feel like it's more acceptable? Because it feels like it is, as far as you know, mental health, people are talking about it more and, and actually going to get more help. Yeah, I, I think for sure. Because well, uh, this, this lady talked about how uh, society is a group think, like it's, we, our brains work a certain way, but society mm -hmm. is like a giant brain that works the exact same way. And so when it's an automatic doing the same thing over and over again, you you fall into that same trap where you don't have this awareness anymore you're just like it's nine o'clock i can't wait till it's friday you know then i have the we all oh, i hate right. mondays you know and everyone kind of <laughs> acts that way and then what covid seemed to do is make everyone pay attention because there wasn't the flow the the consistency anymore it forced everyone mm -hmm. to go i don't know if i like my wife you <laughs> know people are getting divorces <laughs> yeah. at this yeah. crazy rate or they're like why do i have to go to work i'm doing all my work from home in three hours a day instead of 12 you know and yeah. so it forced everything to change because they had this awareness so in some ways i think covid was one of the best things that could have happened because it's making people go am i really mentally healthy i don't know i should be talking about this because i don't feel very good and yeah kind of a thing like yeah, you so. said, bring your aware. The first thing is awareness. And I feel like as a whole, everybody became a little more aware. It forced it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, definitely. And they talk a lot about like a death of a parent or the birth of a child or these big events that happen in your life force this crazy weird awareness or the loss of a mm. job you've had for a long time. You're even a dog. It could be anything. But when it forces right. you to pay attention or, or be outside of your norm, that awareness piece is big. But if you have too much of that happening without the tools, that's where bad things can <laughs> start to happen. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. Which is why I think it's good. Everyone's talking about it because it just develops those tools, but mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, everyone it, had to stay at home and be on TikTok, <laughs> And then everyone started talking about how everybody has ADHD. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, right. <laughs> everyone started sharing all of like their like trauma from growing up and mental health stuff. It was, Do like, you guys see that too? everywhere okay mm -hmm. i i didn't I'm, know i'm cause... pretty sure i have self-diagnosed adhd so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or tiktok di diagnosed at this yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably it's... worse worse or better than a web md i can't even figure that one yeah I, yeah <laughs> it has to be worse because you, like how you know the algorithms work i would imagine you just end up in this echo chamber like you know, you pick up a couple things from one video, like, oh yeah, I do some of that. And then like, you get like 50 more ADHD videos because yep. you watched one for longer than six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh God, do I need to go on Adderall? No, no, I think I just, I think I need a cold shower and, <laughs> go yeah. and work out again. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. You but I, I actually, this, you know, my word was moved. So I've actually been, I've been rucking uh with like a just a 25 pound pack for 
do at least three miles a day um, so far all year. And uh, I have noticed that it's only been, it's only the 18th. So we're, you know, two and a half weeks into the new year. And I have had like a pretty substantial lift in brain fog. And I was like, ah, dang it. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, I knew, <laughs> knew all along, I knew all along that it was exercise that was always like, you know, did that forever growing up. Like that mm -hmm. was always the outlet. Like anytime you're stressed, it didn't matter. You had practice that day. You were going to go like, you know, either do conditioning or lifting or whatever, which releases all of the good things. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you stop doing that for any period of time, at least for me, like now I really know that it like really messes with my head. That's good. Yeah. That's a good mm -hmm. self-awareness. <laughs> it is. Yeah. That's really good to know. Yeah. 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 You do I a lot. Nolan, I've, I've had, I've, I've had that awareness for a long time is I'll come home. And if I'm, if it's like an office day and I've been in there, I have to go do something. Otherwise I'm just grumpy and like not myself. Haven't you been cross country skiing like lately? Is yeah. That yeah. We do... Melissa and I bought skis. So we've been doing that like twice a weekend. You're crazy, man. Do you like it? It's so, Oh, it's so fun. Is it? I haven't tried yeah. it. Yeah. It's awesome. Ash and I bought skis a couple of years ago. Yeah, you guys... It's so much fun. Shoot. Yep. I feel like I'm missing out now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've gotten invited to go a few times. I was just like, anything with the word cross country in it is not for me. <laughs> you need the skate ski because it's a little faster. What's, yeah. What's the difference? Uh, skate uh, skis are solid to your feet. So it's like you're on really long ice skates kind of, but yeah, like it's like that same yourself. motion. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> huh. Good to know. Have, yeah. have you guys seen the movie Stutz on Netflix? Did you watch that at all? We watched some of it, but we didn't finish it. Okay. The one with Jonah Hill and he's talking yep. to his therapist. Yeah. Yeah. It just made me think about it because he talks about this triangle in there and the very base level is exercise and diet. And that'll get you 80% of the way <laughs> yeah. to feeling wow. better. Yeah. And people say it all the time, right? I like exercise mm -hmm. and diet, exercise and diet. But he goes, when people come in, that's the first thing they look at. And then he go, and then it cures most of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Which wow. Is, <laughs> which... Yeah. Which is funny timing for the fact that there that government survey came out stating that Lucky Charms were healthier than yeah. Did you see that uh, red, red meat? <laughs> God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know who to trust. Def they they seem pretty rough to trust sometimes. The government, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and yeah. uh, yeah. Now now I'm gonna get bombed or you know. No, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be okay with the twelve people watching this thing. We need to work. We yeah. need to work on escape velocity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, <laughs> they can't get us. <laughs> that movie's sweet. You guys, you guys could check it out. There, there was like a point in if if we go back to talking about that authentic authenticity piece. There was a. I don't know if you got to this point. Nolan was like halfway through where he goes. We've been filming for two years. Uh, we wear the same clothes. Oh, yes. Did you see that part? Yes. And, yep. he, and he goes, we've been wearing the same clothes every single day. We've been filming for two years. It looks like we're in your office. We're not. It's a green screen. And then he turns off the green screen and you can just see it in the background. And he goes, it just feels so fake talking about being vulnerable and authentic. And we're in this studio telling everybody it's this. And he's like, this isn't even my real hair. And he pulled his hair off. It was a wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a turning point. We watch just a little bit further than that. It's like a turning point. You're like, Oh, that, and it's like, holy, he's being authentic here. Yeah. It felt good though. It felt really good mm -hmm. to see that. And it was, yep. and maybe that's why I was kind of pushing a little bit on the picture thing earlier. Cause it was like, he, he's in the movie business. He's spending all this money. He's got all these lights mm -hmm. and he's doing this thing. And he just, he just tore it away and it felt better. <laughs> it felt and better being tell, messy. It, it felt better to us because it was felt better for him. You know, yeah, you he could just, tell. He just got to be with his book. His like, I, I mean, they seem super friendly, like more than, than therapist and patient. But yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just kind of kind of wild seeing that. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I need to finish it. It's yeah. called Stutz. Stutz. Yeah, it's really good. Right. I mean, Jonah Hill makes fun of him the whole time. There's like a part in there where, like the the therapist goes, um said something about fucking his mom like in there like oh yeah i banged your mom uh, did you get that part nolan no <laughs> and then jonah goes 
Oh, it's funny you said that because uh, my mom's coming in tomorrow. It's going to be all three of us hanging out and talking. And then at the end of the conversation, oh goes, hey, I just want you to know Stutz said he fucked you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 and then he, oh, and then his, he goes, I, I don't remember. And then she goes, you'd remember me if, if we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys have? Do you feel like you have? plan coming up that that you're excited about uh, i'm going i uh, finally taken uh my honeymoon uh three years oh, right. three and a half you, years late you haven't done that yet no no so oh, man we had planned on getting married ash was going to do her first travel rotation back when we got married and the market was way down so she ended up taking a full-time job um and so we are going on our honeymoon uh, for three weeks in New Zealand in March, which I see as a total like creative reset for me to mm -hmm. go, you know, I think removing yourself from like what you're comfortable with and what you're used to, which, you know, I guess is the majority of the United States at this point, like, it'll just be fun to go be able to actually spend enough time to like sink into a different culture and figure it out. Yeah. It's gotta be hard for you. Like, based on the United States is where you're comfortable right. you travel so much. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a little harder yeah. for you to just uh, go to another town. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm That'll jacked about that. Yep. Yeah. Cause the last time you went, you were with your sister, right? You, didn't you? That was Patagonia. Your... We oh, did Patagonia. There. Okay. The last time I was in New Zealand was on, I've been there twice on just two really quick five day trips, both times. And they were um, both photo shoots. Okay. Uh, so that this time will be like, I'm going to just enjoy the country. And yes. come back That'll and Ash be awesome. pregnant. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> what about you, Nolan? Uh, I, I'm always like, this time of the year is hard for me. It's like a weird lull of like living where we live. It's cold and dark. So I'm always looking forward just to the spring and being able to, like, we obviously love hiking and camping. So just getting out, doing more of that. That's what fills me up. So just looking forward to that. How do you, how do you stay sane in the winter? Cause I, I like, I wrestle with the same thing, right? I just want to be outside, but I don't yep. like the snow as much as I wish I did. <laughs> like right. I'm not close enough to a, a snowboard park. So I'm just, mm -hmm. where I don't like snow. Well, anymore. you need cross country skis, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I'm going to be one of those cross country guys. Yep. But, huh. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> we'll take you. Yeah. So cross country skiing is kind of one of your outlets, like now that you yeah, do that. Or... Yeah. Okay. Because even like the photography stuff now, it's just so here. It's just so dull and gray and white. It's just kind of hard to get into it. So mm -hmm. for me, it doesn't start up again until springtime, and then then I get more engaged in it. Yeah. It, it's weird. Like I, I haven't taken photos in a long time i think the last one i took was like carrie and i announcing that we were pregnant kind of photo which was fun because i got to be creative and not for money or anything and we were just like let's make mm -hmm. this as goofy as we can because it's kind of fun and then yesterday with these bracelet things that i put out which is kind of wild i don't i don't know if i told you guys but well i've been talking to you about this for like 15 years sam it sounds like mm -hmm. but um i i found uh this therapist and i forgot all about this but she was like one way to stay in the moment is to have like a bracelet or a rubber band and snap it and then focus on the sensation on your wrist. And that'll bring your body and your mind back in the same place into the moment. And it can help you get out of these, like living in the future, living in the past kind of things. And then she, and then I just talked, I did, I did a podcast this week with Robert Andrews and he was saying he, he was like the sports psychologist for Simone Biles and a bunch of other Olympians. And he, that bills guy who got hurt and he like went to the team thing i guess and and helped them all out through that so he's like he knows his stuff but what he yeah. does with a lot of his people is he goes he gives them this one of those live strong kind of type bracelets and when they have a critical thought or like negative self-talk they switch wrists and then he goes the first day they probably switch it 150 times but oh, over wow. time they'll switch it less but it's bringing that awareness to what your thoughts are doing so you're not just i think this it makes me feel this and then i react like this i think this is, so if you can know what your thoughts are doing you can respond differently like we were talking with that guy but anyways yeah. i just like 
for a while it was like, let's just put a funny phrase on there and a cool thing and then help donate money to mental health. And then it was like, oh man, you can really use this as a tool. And it kind of, I'm going to, so I've tra- I launched it today with a bunch of pole vaulters and they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of sweet. But yesterday I did a photo shoot with them. I guess it's, if you call it a photo shoot, but it was kind of fun editing photos again because I haven't yeah. done it for so long. And mm-hmm. so I would imagine, is that kind of what you feel like, Nolan, when you go, I just had this huge winter where I finally get to play with my camera. <laughs> Again, definitely yeah it's nature. almost probably good you know like having that big downtime break from it and then kind of feel ready to get at it again yeah do you do you have anything specific you like taking photos of because like your product photography is phenomenal when somehow you've mastered landscapes <laughs> too <laughs> which i struggle with hard like they're I all just like so the, good now so like kind of like the lifestyle landscapes where there's like a little tiny person somewhere in the frame yeah doing something cool or ha- having like motion in the shot of like an action of doing something do you plan those out or do you just kind of let those happen or you, or you send uh, like your wife hey see what it looks like from up there and you're like i got her good yeah <laughs> a little bit of both it. like sometimes yeah. it's just probably 70 percent of the time it's just like it happened and i caught it but sometimes you miss it and you want to redo it or sometimes you like try to create a shot too mm-hmm. yeah so are you, Sam, are you hoping like New Zealand's going to be kind of like that again? Where you, Cause when I first met you or not first met you, but like when you first really got into camera stuff, you were like, Hey, there's this cool thing you can do with a flashlight in the middle of the night and we're going to do some light art. And we we're, you're drawing wings all over me and we we're, you're trying <laughs> to build like draw a car, you know, we we're like, hey, it's going to look like we're driving. And we were just playing yep. like with the camera. Do you feel like you've gotten away from that and that? you'll be able to get back there or is it past the point of no return? (laughs) (laughs) I'm yeah. yeah, I'm kind of hoping that plunging into like that new set of scenery and stuff will kind of help me reset, recalibrate like where my creativity is coming from because like early on the, the exciting things were because it was also new and fresh and like, you're learning how to mesh technology with nature and like try to Mm -hmm. like capture these things that you see when you see them, like you can almost never reproduce them with a camera, you know, like this, the way you bring in that information into your brain, like, it, like trying to figure that trying to capture that with a camera is, is almost impossible a lot of the time, or at least it felt impossible. Like when I was just getting going and I could tell that I was like super like passionate about it because as I started to learn the cameras, what would happen is like, I would see somebody else's photo, like, And I would be like, how did they get that shot? You know, how did like, and then, and then I would, I'd have the photo kind of in the back of my head and I'd forget about it. And then I'd be working on other photos and trying to, you know, just get better at like just the simple stuff or whatever. And then at this time I was working in my brother's archery shop and I mean, like no joke, like I'd be back, whatever, fletching arrows or stringing up a bow or doing whatever. And then like, it would like click. And I know like my subconscious was like constantly working on these problems that I had given it. And it was like, that's how they did that photo. And then I would go recreate that photo. And like that part of it was super fun. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of that has been lost just because it, it, there's only three things you can change on a camera. Like <laughs> right? there's only three things you can do to mess with the light and have it l- and look different. Once you have kind of quote unquote mastered those things, um, it's just right place, right time or like trying to figure out like that next level of shot you want to take. Obviously there's always stuff to learn. There's always different techniques. There's always things you can do. Um, But as far as like being super excited about like the gear itself, like I've lost like that, that has been lost on me. I would, I am going to try to rekit this year because it's been uh, almost five years now since I bought that a7r3 that you were i bought it like we picked it up on our way to it, go turkey hunt yeah, yeah. And like I've, I've had that camera since then so this is the first camera you, we've had with both of us with slow motion on it right i, I know yeah. so like, jacked whoa everything's <laughs> gonna be slow-mo and yeah. then the entire world did it and they're like no more slow mo. no more slow mo <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um but yes i am hoping that new zealand you know will be kind of a a way to like dive back into my creative mind without having any deliverables. Like if that makes sense, like I, no pressure. Yeah, I am going there for my honeymoon and to like really enjoy it. I'm not going there to work. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited about that. 
Yeah, you're being created for you for the first time in a long time, right? Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one, man. Like I, I feel like we all probably wrestle with that a little bit, especially with the photography side of things that we do where you're, you like here here's a question. Do you guys feel like you want to ma- you want to be able to master anything or is that feel shitty? <laughs> No, <laughs> like I, I don't really want to master anything. Yeah. Like it, it took yeah. me a while to realize that, but like once you figure out that the fun is in the process, not the destination. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 Same way. It's like, I, I feel like with the things I've gotten closest, I get to like 85% and then I'm so checked out by that point. Like I, cause you can, yep. I don't, I don't know if you guys feel like, that, but you can see the top of the mountain. You're not there, but you go, <laughs> I know what it looks like. I don't have to go up there anymore. Right. <laughs> that looks like a lot of work. It's really steep yeah. and icy and there's a lot of dead or bodies. Or like, you're like squirrel and there's like, there's another mountain over there. Let's check that <laughs> yeah. one out. Yeah. 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 I already know what this one looks like. Yeah. yeah. I wrestled with that too. Like I, I don't know. I had a guy the other day, I forgot who I was talking to, but this it was this exact same conversation where, you know, we're, we're taught and I, I, don't, I don't know if you're taught this. Well, yeah, you are too, because you, your theory or your uh, word this year is consistency. But especially in our job, Sam, it's like if you're not posting every day, if you're not consistent, if you're not doing this, you're going to lose it. And I'm part of me is trying to challenge that and go, but what if I'm just consistent at doing the things that fill my bucket instead of the things that are outside of me that suck energy from it that I feel like I have to do in the mm-hmm. same way? society's told me all sorts of things I'm, I have to do that I haven't done, but mm-hmm. there's gotta be other ways, right? Has to be, it has to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But I, yeah, it, you know, circling all the way back, Nolan, you were talking about perfection and, um, I've been trying to get away from that a little bit too, uh, just because I've started to realize like, um, if I have a creative thought, and I act on it immediately and like create a stupid little video or just like film myself saying something or whatever. And, and then I post that they are exponentially, it goes over exponentially better than when I like think about something for a long time and like really try to like map it out and do this and do that, like, and get it all right. And then post it. And it's like a huge letdown because there's been so much hype. Whereas it's like, like, oh, this is really funny. Like, I, you know, this is right. creative and funny. Like, I'm going to post that. And then it just explodes. And it's like, oh, why am I trying so hard on some of this stuff? <laughs> I, yeah, well, there's, a, there's a video that you guys all both know Peter McKinnon, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. He did a video with one of his buddies that he's that uh, something Ramsey where he's like, a, he does puzzles and he has like a whole production thing. But Peter McKinnon was at his place and they did a video and he filmed it on his phone in like 25 seconds and posted it. And Peter was like, wait, what? And because he, he's a perfectionist, obviously, oh, yeah. and like production level to the max. And like that guy's video like blew up. And it was like, it like was a pivotal point, I think, for him to realize that it doesn't have to be. That again, it's like, that's his style. So maybe, I don't know if it would be better, but probably. Yeah. Like he's probably trapped in that, like he's pigeonholed into like that super high production value. Exactly. Right. Cause that's like almost his identity. And I yeah. think he's trying to break out of that, but yeah. 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 That, that happens to a lot. Like Jim Carrey talks about that a lot where um, I don't know if you guys watch a lot of stuff of him recently, but um, he said something like, Hey, you're not this crazy guy in these interviews anymore. He's like, ah, oh, Jim Carrey was a good character, but I got sick of playing him all the time. So I just <laughs> stopped and kind of the same idea. Like they, I, I know it's happened to me and this is why I was giving you a little pushback earlier. You're like, you're most authentic person I know, you know, with the GoPro and stuff. And I go, but when, when I would go to these, like Reno, people expected like the, welcome to the pole vault vlog. My name is Sean Francis. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm, this is more, this is me, you know, or more me, mm-hmm. you know? And so they were almost like, when you, when are you can do that crazy fucking thing that you always feel like I see on online. Right. <laughs> And I'm, it's not, it was like this weird character I was playing all the time. And mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Like with Peter McKinnon, I couldn't even imagine if you're trying to be so precise and create this image and make everything look nice. And I mean, Sam and I both showed these giant ass lights that we have in here because we know <laughs> it's going to make you look better. But at the yeah. same time, you know, we lose it. We lose a little authenticity about that a little bit. But 
Right. Like I think I think it shows. Like people people are smart, and it almost seems like with the more people are posting, they can see through the bullshit even more. We can see an ad a mile away. (laughs) Yes. Than we used to be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of wild, but Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you, what do you guys, where do you want to see these things going from here on out? Like, do you want to, do you feel like this was beneficial for, for us or, or do you, should we try and bring like Joe in (laughs) with it too? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. generally I, curious. I think it would be fun. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a podcast. I like, I just like, I like bullshitting, but it, w- it might be fun to like have like an idea to revolve it around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, all right, this whole podcast, we're just going to like try to piggyback business ideas off each other, even if none of them ever go anywhere. Like that might yep, be. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good yep. idea. Yeah. yeah, I I just didn't know what to do for the first one, so I was like, let's just see where this goes. But yeah, if we yeah. have a theme or something, or even if we, because we started ranting about AI the other day too, of about <laughs> yeah. how scary it could be chain. or how awesome was, it could be. I was, I was like, just we, gonna say we should do one whole podcast about AI. We could all research it for like a few days. Well, I'm just gonna, we'll just ask AI to write us a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what should I say in a podcast with? Sam Soholt and Nolan Berg, and it will tell me exactly yeah. what to say. <laughs> Nolan, yeah. Nolan's word of the year is consistency. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? It already knows. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Just I keep think it though, yeah, focused. for me, like this has just been great to reconnect with you guys and like bring in like Joe or Nick or Logan or like people yeah. like it'd just be a good time. Yeah. Okay. I was just, like I said, that. I just hate the fact we got so far away, like where we, you guys are closer, obviously, but it's like, seems, seems like it's just going to get farther away. (laughs) Yeah. Right. If we, if we don't start pulling it, reeling it back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, I don't know. I'm going to forget the word. Misoji. It's, uh, basically. That was also on my little note thing. Was Was it? it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's from the book, uh, the comfort crisis. So basically it's, it's a Japanese word that is a practice of a ritual purification by washing the entire body. But it's the way he used it in the book was the, it was, you only have two rules. (laughs) You do something really hard and you don't die. Like that's the only two rules. And you try to, you try to do one or two of those a year where you pick something where you have the potential to fail. Um, And that's why. Isn't isn't it? It's like, it should be like higher than 50% that you're going to fail. Right. Or, yeah. Or whatever you try, yeah, try to make that odds. Yeah. Right. So basically it's a, ch- it's a challenge that's going to push you to your limit and like really find where your edge is. Um, is this where that height came from? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all makes sense now. It's all and that's together. been, that's been ruminating for a couple of years too. So we got to make it yeah. happen. Does yeah. it have to be physical? Uh, I think it's supposed to be. Okay. I was just, yeah. just wondering. Yeah. Like in the book, the examples they gave, it's like there was two guys, they had like a rock that was at the bottom of the ocean and they would, one of them would swim down while the other one was treading water. And then he would move it across the floor of the ocean and they moved it 5k across the floor of the ocean. Holy. Yep. And then another one they did did like, did he have a goal? Was a goal 5k? Goal was 5k. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then like another, I don't, there was another one where it was like something about the Grand Canyon. It was like hiking like to the bottom and back up in a certain amount of time or yep. whatever yep. it was. And, um, but yeah, like I figured if we can go rip out the Matahe trail in like, we're going to, we were going to do like the original hundred miles, but if we could do, you know, a hundred miles over four days, I think that is at the point of failure. That, that would be hard, but Very, doable. Yeah. Yeah yeah the only the my only like wall against that it's not that it doesn't sound fun or that it like i get to hang out with you guys or not even the hard part it's like is it is it cool like the scenery or is yeah it is okay because the few pictures i saw was like this looks like i'm walking across a a field no no no. it's (laughs) it's literally it's a hundred miles through what we hunted it Oh, okay. I'm yeah. I'm in now. Yeah, those photos didn't do it justice. And I was like, no, it's a hundred miles through the walk. Badlands. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. We probably we probably crossed it a couple times when we were out there. Yeah. 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 That's but, the only reason if I haven't been super excited about it because I was like, yeah. oh man, we're gonna walk across a prairie for four days. No, like, no, it's <laughs> no, it's, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be like a hundred miles of like up and down. I, it's I have no idea how many thousands of feet of elevation gain and loss lots. It's be lots. Okay. Nick and I, Nick and I biked the first twenty five miles of it, and it's three thousand feet of elevation gained in the first. In the and, first it took, and it took Nolan five days to do it on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it took us like six hours. It'd probably be fast, like like <laughs> through it all. Like it'd probably be like you'd probably wreck your body less doing it on foot. Honestly, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What about? Are you guys worried about the heat? Because you were talking about yeah. doing it in August. <laughs> well, um, the last time you chatted. Yeah. About it. I just figured, uh, cause you got a baby coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it'd be better to have a, a slightly older baby. Um, when you do it. How, well, I'm not bringing the baby, so it should be. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I, I understand that. <laughs> I mean, maybe eventually, but right off the bat, I mean, she should, she should at least be able to stand. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could do it. Um, the other thought I had, and this doesn't help you, Sean, but like the other thought I had was combining uh, misogy with a hunt where we could do it like over seven days, but like we hunt our way through a hundred miles. Um, and then if we kill something, like we would just we have, have to carry it. <laughs> no, 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 no. If we kill something. We, so my, my original thought was to have the girls out there in Nolan and Melissa's camper or a camper, uh, and if Carrie wants to come along with the baby and hang out in the Badlands, <laughs> <laughs> a baby in the Badlands, you know. Baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, no, but no, if we if we did shoot something, we could like you know have somebody loop around and drop it off at a cooler. That'd be right. cool. <laughs> but it might defeat the original purpose was to you know just rip something out really hard. The heat mm-hmm. would suck. Um, maybe you know it gets hot out there. You but you just never know. Like it could be scorching or yeah it could be 65 you know right you just never know that time of year you know what's kind of you know what's wild i i told uh that fire chief about this idea that we were going to do this and he fucking researched the shit out of it more than i did he's like this really? is gonna be awesome this is gonna be awesome what trail are you guys taking are you taking this one are you doing this one are you doing this and he <laughs> he went all into it i guess a few years i think it was two years ago he goes to duluth and hikes like 20 miles by himself over the weekend like maybe it's farther i, I can't remember yeah but he goes i just like to get away from my family and i like to hike and i don't like anyone talking to me and i like meeting weird people who are older or younger and they're hiking way faster than me and i don't know why and like they're just <laughs> quiet. like this lady hobbling past me while he's like oh, i'm freaking dying doing this <laughs> and he said uh maybe it was a four-day hike he did but on day one his water straw broke and he goes, all I had was, all I had was like a candy bars, uh, a little bit of water and like four things. And I was in the middle of fucking nowhere and my phone didn't work and I was stuck out there. So that changed things for me. I had to learn how to survive all by myself. And he said he barely made it through and he got to his truck and he immediately drove to the gas station, just drank two cokes like two giant cokes <laughs> just to get some calories and sugar back into it oh man yeah but i think it, i think he's kind of wired like we are where like you want to do hard things for for yeah. whatever reason i wonder if more mm-hmm. people are wired like that than we're aware of that just they get I think stuck. everybody is yeah 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 i think they you just know, don't know it right exactly i think Every time some, I don't care who you are. Every time you do something harder, you have to earn something like there's so much more, there's so much satisfaction in that. And I think that there's a lot of people that just never experience that because they grow up in a very padded life. Yeah. Instant like, gratification. Yeah. Hmm. God damn you, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny you bring that up because I immediately think of like Bo Burnham. Oh yeah, <laughs> that song. Yeah. Dude, Come on, Jeff, get him. Could you, could you imagine doing like what he did? Just being a video or in a photography guy, and like all three of us, and you just watch that special and you go, I mean, that's what he did, right? That like, is it massage? Massage? 
Misogy. Misogyny? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's misogyny. <laughs> misogy? But misogy. that's kind of what he did in a way. This is this really freaking hard thing that just launched. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. He had to feel pretty good at the end of that. But. Yeah. Well, do guys, it's it's nine. I won't keep you any longer if, if you guys need to get going. But yeah, well, we'll do it. We'll do it again sooner than later. Definitely. I feel like the best part of this podcast was the end. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> should always cut out the rest and just have us talking about hard things. I think we nailed it. Right, yeah. do a whole podcast on that. We could. We could. Yeah. yeah, let's just talk about all like the the heart, like whether it be the track and field stuff we did, or things since then, or before then. I think we should just talk about all the hard shit we've learned from. Yeah, it seems like it seems like we flow the best when we're talking about ideas instead of yeah, uh for sure. Instead of hey, what's inside what's deep inside your soul, you know, unless it's yeah. helping something. We're all I'm, kind of uh, planners, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it hard because how do you Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for doing this. I just the first one's probably gonna be the weirdest one. And then if we keep going, it'll be awesome. I oh, will keep going. I think. Okay. For yep. sure. Yeah. I'm cool pumped about it. All right. Thanks for the chat, guys. All right. Night, boys. Thanks, See guys. Ya. I don't know. Maybe you guys found that interesting. Maybe you didn't, but it was it was good for me, which is kind of the point of this. So, um, we might do some more of these. I hope we get to do some more of these because uh, I, I felt pretty good after the end. It was just, I like talking to them. They're the best. They're my friend. <laughs> so. Guys, I hope you're having a good time. I hope there's something in here that made you smile or, you know, made, made you mental health a little bit better. Um, remember, life's meant to be experienced. Get out there and experience life. And curiosity will get you there. See you in the next one. <laughs>